we've all been hearing about what's been going on in Afghanistan, but what we haven't been hearing much about is what it's like for the Christians in Afghanistan now and what that means for the rest of the world. Last year, Afghanistan was listed as the second most dangerous place in the world for Christians to live, just slightly behind North Korea. People aren't able to convert to Christianity legally in Afghanistan, as converting to Christianity can be punishable by death. Some places in Afghanistan were better than others, but the places that were the worst when it comes to the persecution of Christians and people who converted to Christianity, those were the areas that were controlled by the Taliban. As you've probably already heard by now, the Taliban has now officially overthrown the government in Afghanistan, and they will be enforcing Sharia law in the country. Now, without getting into too many details, this isn't good news for anyone who values freedom, self-expression, and the ability to leave Islam. Now, a lot of people have been under the impression that it's not going to be so bad because, after all, the Taliban did guarantee the rights of women under Sharia law. But for people that don't understand, this means that women wouldn't have what you and I would consider to be rights. In fact, people in general won't have what you and I consider to be rights. Women who aren't veiled, people who leave Islam, people who commit adultery, people who even insult Islam, could be punished by death. Now, though there are many Muslims in Afghanistan who are happy with the Taliban's takeover, life for Christians was already hard, and it's about to get a lot harder. While I was on the phone with the girl, she suddenly fell to the floor, and I didn't hear anything else. Then about an hour later, she called me back and said that the Taliban were going into every house looking for Christians. On the Open Doors report that was published last year, here's how it was for the Christians before the Taliban took over. It is impossible to live openly as a Christian in Afghanistan. Leaving Islam is considered shameful, and Christian converts face dire consequences if their new faith is discovered. Either they have to flee the country or they will be killed. If a Christian's family discovers they have been converted, their family, clan, or tribe has to save its honor by disowning the believer or even killing them. Christians from a Muslim background can also be sanctioned in a psychiatric hospital because leaving Islam is considered a sign of insanity. A secret Christian in Afghanistan says, How we survive daily, only God knows. He knows because he has been kind to dwell with us, but we are tired of all of the death around us. Afghanistan remains the second highest country on the world watch list, and persecution is only very slightly less oppressive than North Korea. The Islamic State group and the Taliban continue to have a strong, violent presence in Afghanistan, with the Taliban controlling large regions. All Christians in Afghanistan are extremely vulnerable to persecution. Areas controlled by the Taliban are particularly oppressive, but there is no safe way to express any form of Christian faith in the country. I think about the fact that in the West, our church is declining in attendance, and all of us can go to church anytime we want. But in Afghanistan, they don't have that luxury because there are no churches. You can't just go out and worship freely. This is yet another reminder of just how much those of us who are Christians in the West don't just have it a little bit better, but we have it as a cakewalk compared to most of the other places for Christians in the world. Now, that's not to say that our complaints aren't valid, but this really helps to put into perspective the things that we complain about. It's so easy for us to get into our bubbles and not realize the significance of the persecution in places like North Korea, China, the Middle East, and so on. So for those of us that are Christians in America and the West, only God knows what the future holds, and there will undoubtedly be extremely tough situations awaiting for many of us in the future. But no matter where we are in the world right now, whether we're facing tough times now or later, Later, I pray that all of us will be able to echo the sentiment that Paul made in Philippians 4. A lot of people know verse 13 where Paul says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. But what most people don't know is the context that comes right before that verse starting at verse 11. There Paul says, I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of becoming content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. So may we all endure these hard times and suffer well, knowing that our ultimate hope is far greater than anything that this world has to offer. And with that in mind, let's keep our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan in prayer and stay prepared to be able to assist them if we have an opportunity. And the next time we find ourselves downplaying or even ignoring what's going on in other countries when it comes to Christian persecution, what are you going to say? What do you mean?